Welcome back to the Pew, everybody. I am your host, John Edwards, and here, as always, across the table right. from me is my co-host and cohort, Victor Adams. Two weeks in a row. I know, man. <laughs> I mean, that's been a, the summer has been been difficult, you know, with with you know traveling and everything else. You sure. know, we're we're jumbling our kind of like juggling really our sure our schedules and everything. So it's good to kind of well, like, <laughs> even though we're squeezing in sure. on a Sunday. We're here. Well, and it did. I mean, it doesn't get any easier when the school right. year starts now because we've right. all got kids involved in sports and after school activities, and so we're used to recording the evenings on weekdays and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to do now because you know you get home for about an hour and then kids got to go to soccer or volleyball or football and or then homework and projects. And yeah, stuff like that. all that yeah, stuff so, too. Yeah. So I'm glad we found time on the Sunday to jump yep. back in here. I'm excited. Uh, just got my voice is a little raggedy. I spent you know Friday and Saturday in Denver. Uh, leading the men's leadership summit out there. So I want to say thank you to Dan Donaldson and the men's leadership team out there in Denver. They brought me out there because they want to start men's groups in every parish. Yeah. And, you know, the Knights were there and all these different men's organizations that are just saying, we want whatever helps men get more involved in the parish. So basically gave the restored parish mission to them and then spent a lot of time going through the men's group stuff and all of that. And it's about 70 men, man, from parishes all over Denver. And we've already gotten some submissions in and starting to schedule going back out there three or four times. And so it was just a, another amazing day and another way the Lord's having us work to to get men, um, first of all, to realize that, that the work we're doing, really what we're doing, it's not just a podcast or a speaker thing. It's actually building something that will last. And, right. And the heart of the ministry, which is to go out and build those men's groups. So, Dan, thank you for having me out and all the rest of the guys that had something to do with that. I'm excited to come out to Denver again and again and again. Maybe I'll be able to catch a Broncos game when I was out there. You know, it's my favorite team, so maybe we'll get over there in the wintertime. Or not in the wintertime, I'd rather go in like the early (laughs) fall, sorry, where it's still a little warm, but maybe we can get out there and do that. So thanks, guys. If you are interested in a men's leadership summit in your diocese, in your area, in your deanery, uh, if you want, to, if you're somebody with a parish, you know, a priest or a deacon listening, or or a man that has, you know, his heart being moved to just, I think I might be able to start a group or at least get John here. Then reach out. Don't be afraid, right? As Christ says, be not afraid, right? So reach out and go to our website at justagotinthepew.com. There's you know plenty of places on the homepage to read about what we're doing, how we're helping. There's testimonies there. Uh, but you can also schedule a call with me. You will wind up talking to me, I promise. And we will see if it's a good fit. And if it is and we can help, then we will get you on the calendar and come out there. And when we follow the steps that we put in place that the Lord has given us to follow, training ahead of time, finding leaders before we ever even come to your parish, then I promise you when you launch, you'll have a lot of guys in attendance and the thing will keep going and growing, which is what we're all looking for. Fruit that lasts. So thank you for all that. Um, for those of you that have been given to the ministry, thank you for that. Uh, we picked up a lot of new donors this weekend. And then, of course, over the uh, every time we put out a podcast, it seems like someone's answering the call to, to support us. And folks, this past weekend, one of the guys there and I spent some time talking about the ministry and how we can and meet the need you know it's it's hard to do when you're when you're trying to you know get out there and and be at every parish and all those things so there's some needs we have in the ministry and, and i really helped you know he helped me identify them this weekend so we're gonna be looking uh we're looking right now to raise funds to to hire someone who could fundraise for us that can go out there because i can't do all that and everything else that the lord has me doing and running the ministry and going out and actually putting boots on the ground. So we're going to be looking to bring on a fundraiser. We're looking to bring on a, a, an executive assistant, um, you know, that could help with events and all those things. And then we're also going to be bringing on, looking to bring on somebody to train to go out and to start some of these groups too, where I, you know, I can't always fit all of them in because I promised my wife I was only going to go two times a month. So um, without, I don't want to break that promise. And for us to meet the need, then we've got to bring on other teammates. So, But to do all of that, to pay three different people, I mean, it, what people need in the world today and what's just, we need capital. And we can't handle it all just by me going and speaking and, and the stipends covering that. You know, they're going back into the nonprofit. So we're looking for people that can give small, you know, but we're also looking for people that can give big. So if you're a person that can give whatever amount, you can go to our uh, our page, just a guy on the pew.com. Right there at the top, you see support and donate. You can click that, fill out a form right there. You can put do it monthly, annually, one time, however you want to. Uh, you can also send us a check. All that information is on there. But look, for us to continue to grow and to continue to answer the call of what Lord the God what Lord what the what God is asking us to do, we've got to have some help with that stuff. And so it's hard for me to ask for those things. I don't like putting my hat in my hand, but that's something the Lord is calling me into too. That 
that uh, uncomfortable place for me because he's telling me, John, we got to do this to move forward and to grow. So for all you that have helped us since the beginning, for those of you that have come on new, thank you for your yes. Thank you for your generosity. And for all of you that will hear this call and feel called to answer it by becoming a monthly supporter or an annual supporter, I appreciate you now. And I can't wait to see that and to, to be able to talk to you and thank you for it. So again, you can go to donorbox.org slash pew, or you can go to justagoutinthepew.com and become a supporter there. Uh, finally, I just want everybody to know I've been talking a lot about a pilgrimage lately. I'm going to announce where that is the week of September 4th. So I don't even know what day that is. I think that's after Labor Day, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's after Labor Day. Mm-hmm. So actually, that's I think the Monday of Labor Day. So we'll have a show come out on the 5th. So if you've been waiting and you're interested to hear where we're going and who we're going with and when it's happening and all that, then you will find that out on September the 5th. We'll have stuff on Facebook and our social media that day, and I'll also announce it here. Um, just waiting to get the final things done and then we'll be able to announce it then. So if you're wanting to go with us on another trip, tune in next week for sure and we will let you know all the details. So thank you for listening to that as you guys always do. And ladies, thank you for that and for your attention. Victor, we're going to jump now into kind of what we're here to talk about. Gotcha. And well, I was going to ask you, is there like a little like – you know, hint to what continent's going to be this thing. Uh, it's not in America. Okay, <laughs> it's not America. North not America. North South America. America. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. it's uh, it's in the other hemisphere. Let's okay, just gotcha. say that. All right? right, I'll leave it. So, there. other side of the world. Let's just put it there. But uh, thank you, Victor, for being a bystander yeah. during all those announcements all the time. You're always kind of nodding and listening. So, thank you for your patience. And it's funny. That's kind of what I, I want to talk about today. Um, is you know just something that's happened over the last few weeks. You know, I'm always one of my favorite things about going to daily mass is always being in the in the word every day. Mm. You know, I, I get in the word outside of it because I like to play Russian roulette a lot with the scriptures and and you know pop my Bible open and see where the Lord leads me and read until something sticks. Um, but but besides that part in the morning or in the evening or whenever the Lord calls me to do that, I love reading you know the daily mass rings the night before, the morning of, and then at mass because the repetition the Lord speaks to me and something mm. always goes bing. That's like that's what's for me today. And so, you know, last and not this past Sunday, because this was the twenty first Sunday in in in, uh, in ordinary time, but the one before, week before, was the twentieth Sunday in ordinary time. And I was reading the first reading; it was Isaiah. And as I was reading it, part of it stuck out. Like I think it was almost the first sentence. It said, "It's and this was Isaiah fifty six verse one." For anybody who wants to go and, and check it out for themselves, it says, "Observe what is right and do what is just." And it went on to say other things, but that just stopped me, you know. And that's that's what they talk about with like lectio divina, you know, the practice of of praying and reading through scripture is, you know, you pray, then you read, you pray, then you read, you pray, then you read, usually around three times, and and by that time the Lord usually will grip you and stop you at something and go, okay, that I don't know what that means or why that's grabbing my attention, but it's something I need to stop and look at. And for me, that was that was that. Observe what is right and do what is just, and it made me start thinking. That, you know, a lot of times I personally and a lot of people that that are Christians, we're good at the first part, but we fall short of the second part, Mm -hmm. right? Like, So what does it mean to observe what is right and to do what is just? Well, it's easy to sit back and go, okay, well, I know that this is right. I know the Ten Commandments are what I should live by. I know, you know, the golden rule is what I should live by. I, I know the things I'm hearing in Mass are the things I need to be doing. But it's one thing to observe them. It's another to actually put them into your life. And so what it says, like, do what is just, it's like it's, one, it's, it's not enough to know what's right. We have to do what is right. And that's where my heart is. And a lot of times when I'm giving these missions and a lot of the talks, especially the one in having a real relationship with Jesus, I'm like emphatically sharing with people that so many of us aren't doing that. Right, we're just we're going to church. We're putting on our Sunday best. We're looking the part. We're going there. You know, we're getting our kids and everybody there, and we're checking that box for the week. Right, we're going to mass on Sunday, or maybe I'm playing my rosary daily because somebody told me to. But am I am I doing these things for the right reasons? Am I taking action, or am I just am I just like letting things go in one ear and out the other and not change me? Because at the end of the day. God didn't do what he did and die on the cross for us to go sit in a pretty church on Sunday and and just listen. He did it so that it would move our hearts and that we would actually live it out. And so I just that's what's always on my heart is a call first and foremost to myself to not just, you know, talk the talk, but to walk the walk. 
And then just it pains me to know that how many of us in the world are, are doing that too. We're just – church is just something else on a long list or our faith is something on a long list of things that we do for an hour a week and we check a box. And God deserves and calls us to so much more. Well, you're kind of talking about like the danger of being sedated in our life. I mean, yeah. and then what I mean by sedated is like being – having our worries, our troubles, anxieties – be the permanent thought in the as soon as we wake up rather yeah. than the thought of like thank you for this blessing i'm living in a day there's breath in my, my lungs my heart is beating and i'm ready to do the, your will today god um if you switch that mindset all those those things that just kind of keep you in this this slow drudgery throughout the day where pressure anxiety and work and and w- concern about finances and stuff like that it sedates you over yeah. time to where you, you you're numb. You don't you're expressionless. You don't really interact with people because you're just concerned with so much with doubt or sure. worry, or, and and it consumes you and it, and it suffocates your your spirit and it and it prevents you from being like energetic and like really excited about what is going on in the day. And you miss a lot of things that the God the, the, the God is putting in front of you. Yeah. Because you're looking at your own worries, your own thoughts, your own suffering. And yes, we all suffer. You know, we all have things that are not comfortable every day. And um, you, you've heard many things from me where I've had to like, like, you know, deal with my own sense of what patience is for me. You know, my yeah. time frame of patience is different from what God's timeline of patience is, and I had to realize that. You sure. know, My expectation can't be imminent in the sense of I want something now to change for me. I had to make sure that I was prepared to accept that new new offer to where I was very much more not trying to escape one thing to the other, but really appreciative of what the new opportunity sure. is. Well, I love that you use the word consume, uh, too, because oftentimes that's what we're doing. We're going to consume but we don't ever we don't ever put it into action. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I know countless people in my life that have read every self help book out there. Like, you know, all the business type stuff, like how to win friends and all that kind of Dale Carnegie right. stuff and right. all this different stuff out yeah. there. And but you like they never leave it like live it out. It's like if I just you know consume enough, then eventually like maybe I'll go on automatic pilot. But no, like everything in life, you have to you have to learn, but you also have to act it out. Like it has to take a place in your life. And that's what, I mean, it's funny that the readings over the last week have continued that sort of theme. I mean, I was reading, um, one of the days and it was a reading from judges, uh, chapter two nineteen, And they were talking about, obviously, you know, people were giving into the balls and, mm-hmm. and start, uh, and, and start, you know, worshiping what they were worshiping. And, uh, you know, the writer there was lamenting over, over whenever there's a judge, right. like people are good, but whenever a judge has died, then they just go right back to yeah, their bad back ways. Back to and, relativism, like yeah. what's good for me is, you know, is what I want to do. Yeah, and that's what he. That's what the verse said. It said, mm-hmm. but when the judge died, they would relapse and do worse than their ancestors, following other gods in service and worship, and relinquishing none of their evil practices or stubborn con- conduct. And that's the thing, like. Many of us were going through and we're observing all these things. We're hearing fathers' homilies. We're we're reading readings, maybe, or we're praying certain prayers. But we're still doing every a bunch of stuff in our life that we know isn't good us good you know good for us over there. You know, if I'm going to church every Sunday and I'm like sitting there going and going through the motions, but I'm still going home and I'm still mean to my wife. I'm mean to my kids. I'm 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 still you know giving in to gluttony and all these things in my life in different ways. I'm. Um, I'm not true to what it is that I'm hearing, then then I'm not really living the life of a Christian, right? We're not supposed to just sit here and go, isn't that nice? But that's for somebody else, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're supposed to put these things into action. And and it just reminds me a lot that that verse is like, how many of us were doing that? We're putting on our Sunday best. We're putting on our faces. We're, we're, we're showing up to things at church and we're putting on the facades that we've got it all figured out and we're the perfect you know, Catholics and living the faith the way we should be. But then, you know, behind closed doors, our life's a, a freaking mess, mm-hmm. right? And, and look, we're all imperfect, and this isn't a judgment thing. It's not like I'm, I mean, Angel's on her side of the camera as always, and, and the machine over there, she could get over here and tell you every way that probably today I've not lived the faith that I ask other people to live. It's not about being perfect, but it's about taking steps to go, I, I realize like what I heard but I'm not living what I heard. Like I'm living a duplicitous life. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out, I'm putting this face forward, 
but this is really who I am over here, and this is not what God calls us to. And you know, there's tons of Bible verses about this. James speaks about it a bunch in the book of James, but he says things like this: like, so whoever knows the right thing and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Right? If we if we're going to church every week and we're hearing things, and God is always pouring into us if we have our antennas up, as Tony Allen used to say that played for the Grizzlies, mm-hmm. right? Have your antennas up. If we're like listening and we're going and we're desiring to be a better person, then God's always going to speak to us. It may not be exactly what you expected or wanted to hear that weekend, but he's going to say something. And are we going to take that opportunity where God is speaking into us and actually do something about it? Because if not, if we continue to to say, I know that he was speaking to me, but I'm going to ignore that because I'm choosing comfort and ease. And it's so much easier to walk this comfortable path than it is this difficult thing that God's asking me to. Like the wide road to to destruction is 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 pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know that I want to get on that narrow road because it's just too hard to walk that way. Um, then, then we're never going to change into the people that God wants. And, and I think so many of us, we spend our time trying to avoid hell instead of trying to get to heaven. And, and the difference is like, I'm going to do just enough and, and I'm going to step my toe in the water of, of, of Christianity or, or morals or being a good person, you know, an hour a week or two hours a week, but then I'm going to continue to be the person I need to be over here. Then you're going to find yourself on that wide road mm-hmm. because discipleship is a choice. There's a difference between being a passive observer and a disciple, right? And that's where so many of us are. We think just going to church and and, and doing some things here and there makes us a disciple. But what makes us a disciple is when we choose Christ fully in our life and we put everything else away, right? Like I am I'm choosing now to to put away my old self, right? That's what Christ, what Paul says. I've died to my old self. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That's the call to discipleship is I am going to make an abrupt right turn right now and I'm going to give my life fully to Christ and start living in the way that he's called me to live. And and you got to be able to be back all the stuff we talk about here on the time. The the devil's going to sit there and go, "Well, you're going to lose this. You're going to, you know, what about this? You enjoy this so much." I mean, I started to watch a show on Netflix the other day, and you know, it had the rock in it and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, "I'm going to watch this show." And two seconds into it, there was all kind of drug abuse and cussing and sex and all that stuff. And I was like, "Man, I'm really enjoying the show. Like, I think I would like him, but I don't really need to be watching this, mm-hmm. right? Like, this isn't." This is going to make me like have things in my mind I don't need in my mind. I'm going to have images of things I can't unsee. Like so, in the moment, am I going to choose to continue to to watch those things and to do those things, or am I going to like say, you know what, I'm just going to find something else that's more wholesome, or I'm going to read a book instead that's about the faith that's mm-hmm. better for me anyway? I'm not saying like you got to not have fun anymore and being a disciple is a boring thing, but there comes a point where we have to realize that that Jesus doesn't want us playing the hokey pokey. Like he doesn't want us walking, you know, one side on on both sides of the road, one foot on both sides. Like we got to choose a side. Right. And so we can't choose that if we're always going to be a passive observer just letting things come in and out and we're just watching and and we're not actually getting in the game and 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 getting into a play and and and, and being active in our life. Well, go back to you said James. What's that? That uh, James. He's, it was yeah. James four seventeen. He said, "So whoever knows the right thing and fails to do it, for him it is sin." Right. And so, uh, what stuck out to me is like you get to a point in your life when you're really trying to change yourself in the sense of forming your in formation of faith. You know where you kind of you feel different. There's joy, and then you kind of like your. It's like your your like you said the antenna is up for the consciousness yeah. of like. What what is good? What is bad? You you kind of are more attentive to those things because you feel it. Yeah, like you were saying, you're watching the show. Well, you're you aware. Felt it. Of you're it. aware. Yeah. You feel it. You kind of like you say, okay, this isn't good for me, and that's because you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, who is kind of like has yeah. has gotten closer because of your relationship with with diving deep into your faith. I do believe the Holy Spirit's always with everybody, but we're more in tune to how we how we assess that. You know, like we we can kind of like be more sensitive to the environment we're in. Like if we're like, yeah, it's probably time for me to leave. Yeah, you know, it's kind of this. It's kind of getting crazy. Or um, you're around people who probably just like you're fun. Like saying, you know that you know, you, like you said, a vial of co- cocaine came out. You know, sure. I'm talking to the kids who are like in in college and high school where you're you're having a good time, and then you see something and it's like, whoa, what is that? Yeah, I that that is danger. I do not need to be around that. And that's like the Holy Spirit kind of saying, hey, man. You know, you're kind of getting to the point where you're going somewhere where you don't need to be. Sure. And yeah. we have to learn that, like, 
choosing the harder things doesn't always mean a difficult life. Right. Right. Like, I mean, in the moment, I might have felt you were talking about feelings. That's why mm-hmm. I said aware, being right. aware, because I don't want people to think like I'm going to follow my feelings because that's where we get off the rails. And <laughs> right. I, I felt like I wanted to watch that show because I was bored and I wanted something to entertain me. But at the end of the day, I, I see those scenes, you know, and things like that. And then all of a sudden that affects like the way I look at my wife or, you know, things like that. And all of a sudden there's distortions and things and it's not good for you. And so over time, like, yeah, in the moment I may feel like, well, I really wanted this. Mm-hmm. Well, what you always wanted isn't always good for you, right? And in the end, if I had picked up, for instance, what I'm reading now, Dr. Bob's book, Be Transformed, about the, the healing power of the sacraments, there's a lot better. My time is much more better spent reading that and more fulfilling mm-hmm. than it is to sit there and watch a bunch of garbage that mindlessly entertains me for a while. And that's where we have to get to in our life. I mean, that's a simple example, but... I mean, James is really getting at this. I mean, he says in James one twenty two, he this is he goes on to say, "Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves." Right? Like, don't sit there and just listen and deceive yourselves that you're getting to be better and you're raising in your holiness and your virtue. Because if you're just hearing the words and you're not living them out, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean squat. Right? It really doesn't. And, and people say, "Well, it's difficult." Well, guess what? So is anything worth doing. Right? Like, that's one thing my father always said, and I always thought it was profound. It's like anything difficult is worth doing. Like, that's, I mean, anything worth doing is difficult. Right? If it's hard, then it's usually a good sign that it's the right thing in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Angela is going through grad school right now, and she's a full time mom, and, 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 you know, and a, to four kids, if you include me. And then she's a full time employee at St. Jude, and, and she's sitting here, and the devil's always beating on her about how difficult the things are and how hard it is. And, but at the end of the day, I know, and she keeps her head down, and she she does the things that God's given her the gifts to do. There's going to come that day when she's wearing that cap or whatever you do when you graduate grad school. I never went graduate college, so I don't know what you do in grad school. But like, whatever that celebration comes, there's going to be such a feeling of worth and joy and and happiness, accomplishment, and yeah, accomplishment, yeah, yeah. because she in the midst of of being able to choose the comfortable way, the easy way to just say, you know what, made a mistake, I don't need this. There's going to be such good pride in her life and and, and i'm going to be completely proud of her and i mean you're sitting I'm, I'm talking about her like she's not in here but like i am and i can't wait to to celebrate that with her but it's very easy to choose the other thing and but jesus talks about this too i mean you talk about doers the word and not hears the word deceiving yourselves we have to quit deceiving ourselves that it's just enough to be present when somebody's talking about the gospel mm-hmm. we have to live the gospel we have to let it permeate us and then let it change our life and what we're doing and so jesus talks about that too you know at the end of the sermon on the mount when he talks about the houses like those who hear my words and do them are like a house built on rock which withstands the storms those who hear my words and do not do them or like a house built on sand, right? And that whole part is the gut check we've had shows on where he's basically saying there are consequences to not living the life of a disciple. You want to get to heaven, you're not going to be able to just be around people that are going to go to heaven and hope it rubs off. You actually have to start living this because no one else can live it for you. Just like in the gospel today, when Jesus says, who do you say that I am to Peter? It didn't matter what John said. It didn't matter what 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 you know uh, Judas said or what what uh, Andrew or Philip said, it mattered in that moment what Peter said. And that's what this is a call to is like, am I just a bystander? Am I going to live my life the right way? You know, am I going to do as St. Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, am I going to set my mind on things that are above and not things on the earth? Because if not, I'm going to wind up, like Paul says to Titus in, in, in 116, you know, they profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. Mm-hmm. You know, and do I want to be that person? Because you know, the point of this, Victor, is it's not enough to know what's right. We have to do what is right. You know, not just for ourselves, but for our wives, for our children, for our friends, for those around us, for our priests, for for anybody that's in our 10-foot circle. You know, people are depending on us, and we've got too many men, and this is the purpose and the mission of our ministry, that are standing by as passive bystanders. You know, we've talked about the stats. When men are leading the family, 93% of the wife, the kids, everybody stays Catholic. When it's just the wives, it's 17%. When it's just the kids on their own, it's 3.5%. That is the role of a man, right? That is the power, 93% to 17. And that's not to slight women. God bless women. They've been leading the charge in the faith for so long. But it's time for men to step back up and quit being these passive observers and bystanders. I know plenty of men in my life, the reason they even go to church on Sunday is so they don't want to fight with their wife. 
I don't have to listen to her yell at me. It's the easier thing to do. But they're not, they're, they have no uh, receptivity to anything. They're closed off. They're thinking about what time the football games start or what time they're going to get to crack a beer on Sunday and pull the grill out. And they're missing the rewards and the and the joys and the, and the and, and the gift that God's trying to give them each and every day. And then we fail our families, we fail our church, and we fail society. And that's what's been going on for so long. So we have to start living the way we're called to. And and St. John Vianney says this, man, and it's a powerful quote. He goes, you either bo- you belong wholly to the world or you belong wholly to God. It's not both, yeah. Right. right, and this is the thing where we mess up. We think, well, God gave us freedom, and I'm choosing something other than him. Well, St. John Paul II has something to say about that too, and he says freedom consists not in doing what we like but having the right to do what we ought. Right, and what ought we do? We ought to give a life, our life, back to the person who loved us so much that he gave everything for us, right? So that we could be not a slave to him. He says, "I've called you friends," but that we, so we could be forever with him in heaven. That's the whole thing, you know. Living a life of disciple, yes, it's hard, but it's way better than being a passive bystander. And is it going to be difficult? Yes, it's difficult. I'm exhausted right now. I poured myself out for two days, left my family to do it. But those men are going to start something there in Denver. We're going to help them if they need be, and there's going to be change there. And while it was difficult, it was hard, and it took time away from my family, you know what? The reward is going to be great, and men's lives are going to be changed, and it made a difference. And was it difficult? Yes. You know, personally, would I have rather slept in on Saturday? And, you know, selfishly, probably so. But my heart is moved to do what God has asked me to do. And this isn't about me. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying – using it as an example that there's something more, but that something more cost us something. Mm-hmm. And it means choosing him over ourselves. Well, you're essentially saying share the gospel, which is kind of like what we talked about at the beginning and where, you know, you observe and then you do. Yeah. You do justice. And that's the process is that when you share the gospel, you have a sense of joy and companionship with the other person because they're also too like you trying to seek to live better, to do better, to be the to be the better self, to be the better husband, to be the better father, or wherever they are in their life, yeah. you know? And I think that's as God loves us for, for pushing through and actually making those steps closer to Him because He knows we have to enter, empty our own heart of our own selfishness, our own, you know, impurity of who we think we are, and just relinquish that and let Him come in and, and fill it to where He lives and dwells there in perfect love. Yeah. Because, like I said, if we're going to, if, if our reward is heaven, we have to learn how to love perfectly as best we can here on this earth. Sure. Because that's what exists in heaven. Yeah, and and, and look, here's here's the real thing. I mean, I I hear people all the time saying like, when is somebody going to do something about this world? When is somebody going to this world's going to hell in the handbasket? And my response is always, when are you? Mm-hmm. When are you going to do something? Because you have more influence and more effect on not just your family but people around you than you will ever know. And that's why Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are my hands and feet. When Jesus went to heaven, he looked at all those people. And he wasn't just talking to Peter and the men there He was and the women. He was talking to all of us through Scripture today, still speaking, going, go and make disciples of all nations. But to do that, you have to be one yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to quit being a passive observer. You can't be a bystander. You have to get in the game. And so, you know... That, I love what Nathan says to Daniel, that man is you. I mean, to David, that man is you. So, guys, for you, those of you out there that are struggling with this, and, and maybe you're hearing this and it's striking a nerve, maybe, maybe somebody turned it off because it hurts to hear the truth. But the thing is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to let it sting and then you know go do something to get your mind off of it? Or are you going to let the Lord speak to you through this show today to do something about your faith, men and women, whoever's listening? Am I observing in my life? That's what we need to do, and that's some how-tos I want to run through there is – you know, I, we need to ask ourselves, is how do we approach the faith? Is it something you're just coasting along with? Are you one foot in or in one foot out? Like, where are you in the faith right now? Are you really going to do the things you're doing in the faith to get to know Jesus and to grow in holiness and to become a disciple? Or are you doing it just because it's something you've always done or somebody around you has or for some other reason other than because you should love Jesus and do what he wants? Second, like, are you just trying to stay out of hell? Because I think that's an honest answer for a lot of people. I just don't want the bad stuff. If I could just walk this sort of mediocre line in my life and be a good person, and then maybe I won't go to hell. It's not about going to hell. It's about going to heaven to be with the one who loves you and wants you there with him always. It's about having the desire for heaven, not the the hope of missing hell. So we've got to be honest about that in our life. You know, some things, tips you could do. I take a journal to Mass with me on Sundays, and I'd write stuff down. 
because I don't want to forget it. I know I'll get out and I'll talk to my kids or I'll start something like this or go to the grocery store and it'll be in one ear and out the other. So I take notes so I can go back through it during the week and look at things and go, you know what? I wrote this down. But another step is how am I living this in my life? You know, Victor, we we had a thing. We, we, we uh, challenged each other in our men's group this month on our on our group me app something we set up when we start up groups to say every day on there or you know how are you sacrificing today our, our whole month of formation was on sacrifice and we're calling each other out about it you know did i did i not if i didn't be man enough to say you didn't and then start working on it tomorrow if you did share with us so we can be expi- inspired what action are we taking pray to god to help you still truly start the life of the call of a disciple lord i'm not living the life of a disciple please show me how Please, I'm giving you the reins of my life. I'm surrendering to you. Come in and take the wheel and show me how to do it. Three, start looking, or four, whatever number we're on, start looking at, at honestly, the things that are keeping you from them. We all know it. As soon as you think about what's keeping me from Jesus, as soon as I said that, one thing immediately popped in everybody's head. It's my porn. It's my drinking. It's it's my inability to, to turn away comfort. It's my pride. It's my anger. It's my unforgiveness. We all have that one thing. You know what it is. If you want to be a disciple and you want to quit being an observer, then turn those things over to him and say no to them. Start saying no right now to the things that are keeping you from him. And finally, make your mind up that you're going to take action every single day. What can I do? Am I going to read the readings every day and find something in there? And then that day I'm going to say, I'm going to practice this in my life. Faith without action is nothing, right? Like we've got to put it into action. We can't just simply say, I believe and not back it up by the way we live our lives. So I know it's a difficult call to all of us. It's a difficult call to myself. I'm sure it is to you, Victor, but it's the call of Christ. And that's what's important is to live and be the people that he calls us to be and to turn away from the evil one, the world and everything else that's calling us to be anything different. Folks, as always, if you've enjoyed the show, please consider supporting, subscribing on YouTube or wherever you're hearing or watching this. Share it with others. Again, we're looking for people to support the ministry so we can keep inspiring and starting men's groups and changing the church and the world and the culture around us. So if you want to do that again, you can go to justaguyinthepew.com. We hope to see you there, and thank you always for listening. So, Victor, let's take it to prayer, all right? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. Heavenly Father, you constantly give us the grace and the tools to live the life you've called us to live. Sometimes, though, we choose comfort and ease over the more difficult path of discipleship. Please give us the grace and the desire to put the call of the gospel into our daily lives. And Father, whenever we find ourselves passively observing your commands and leaning towards comfort, remind us that while the call to discipleship is difficult, anything worth doing always is. In the name of the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, amen. amen.